Hello everyone and welcome to an Unreal Engine 4 tutorial on creating a system for harvesting resources in first person. Let's jump in. Before we start building, I want to briefly explain what this system will look like. Essentially, when we look at a harvestable actor and press the E key, a simple UI will appear with a progress bar displaying how much life the actor has until it is completely used up. Each time we press E, this bar will decrease. If we look away, the UI will disappear. However, upon returning to the harvestable actor that was already interacted with, it will retain its original life, and thus you can continue your progress from where you left off. With that in mind, let's look at the first pieces to build. The first thing to build for our harvesting system will be the UI that displays the progress of the attempted harvest. This will come in two parts, the actual harvest UI and the HUD to place it on. In the content browser, right click, user interface, and click widget. Name this WG underscore HUD. Right click again and make another widget called WG Harvest. Double click this HUD widget to open it. Inside, we only need to do one thing and that is to expose the canvas panel container so that the other widgets can interact with it. To do so, select the canvas panel container and in the top of the details panel, click the is variable checkbox. While we're here, let's rename it to main panel. With that, we're done. Let's go back to our content browser and open up our harvest widget. First things first, select our canvas panel in the hierarchy and delete it. In its place, go into the palette window in the top left and search for vertical box and drop it in. Rename this to main panel and in the palette window, search for text and drag one in as a child of the main panel. Rename this to harvest underscore text. And in the details, change the horizontal and vertical alignments to be centered. Also, change the text to be harvesting dot 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 for some flavor. Next, in the palette window, search for progress bar and drag one underneath the text. Rename this to harvest meter and make sure to click the is variable checkbox so we can edit this in code. In the details panel, for size, select fill. For the alignments, make sure both are set to fill. With the visual design done, let's move into our code for this widget by selecting the graph button in the top right. In here, we only need a single function that will be used to update the amount the progress bar is filled by. In the functions tab on the left side of the screen, click new function and name it update progress. With the function selected, we need to add two inputs of the float data type. One for what the bar should be currently, which we will name input, and the maximum amount the bar could hold, which we will name input max. Once these are added, right click in the graph and search for normalize to range. If you are unfamiliar with normalizing, I highly suggest watching my video on creating a health bar as it describes the process. The link is in the description below. Once this node is added, connect the input pin to value and the input max pin to range max. We can leave the range min pin at zero. Now we can add the node to actually reflect the fill of the progress bar. In our variables tag, control drag harvest meter into our graph in order to acquire a get reference. From this, look for set percent. From the return value pin of the normalized node, connect it to the in percent pin of the new node. Now, whenever we call this function, it'll first normalize our numbers to something that can be used by the progress bar, then set the progress bar fill to reflect that. That's all we need to add for our harvest UI. It may look a bit silly now, but it'll make more sense once we add it to the HUD later. For now, we're done our UI. Going back to our content browser, we need to make a blueprint interface. This will allow us to make ambiguous function calls to our resource actor without actually needing an explicit reference to it. Right click, blueprints, and select blueprint interface. Name this BPI underscore resource underscore interactions and open it. Inside, we need two functions. The first one will be called harvest and it will need two inputs. The first one will be of the type float and will be called harvest amount. The second will be of the type first person character and named player ref. If you are using a different template project or are using a custom character class, the changes to point to the character class you are using. Now let's create a new function called user stopped harvesting. This requires no inputs. That's all we need for our interface. Going back to the content browser, before we can actually build our resource actor, we need to add some things to our player. Find your player blueprint and open it. In my case, it is the first person character. Let's add a ton of variables to be used in our code. First off, click the plus variable button and name this harvest distance and make it of the type float. Also make it public and set the defaults to 300. 
This will be how far away we can harvest a node from. Next, add another variable called HUD ref of the data type WG HUD. Make sure to leave this one private. Next, add another variable called harvest speed of the type float with a default value of 20. Also make it public. This will be used to represent how much of a resource node's life we consume each time we go to harvest. Next, add another variable called resources of the type integer. Leave this private. Next, add another variable called is harvesting of the type boolean. Also leave this private. Lastly, add another variable called harvest node ref of the type actor. Make sure to leave this one private as well. With that slew of variables created, let's dive in. First off, let's spawn our HUD. Navigate to the event begin plane node, and from it, look up create widget. Select our HUD widget as a class. In the variables panel, alt drag in the HUD ref variable to get a set reference to it. Hook that up and connect the inputs and output pins. From this, look up add to viewports and connect the input and output pins. Next, right click anywhere and look up E key and add the E key event. If you are using this key for something else, feel free to choose any other key. Next, we're going to call a relatively large set of code, so let's make this into a function. In the functions panel on the left side of the screen, click the plus function button and name it check for harvest node. It doesn't need any inputs, but it does need two outputs. The first one will be called hit result and will be of the data type hit result. The second will be called did hit and be of the type boolean. Now in the graph, right click and look up line trace for objects and add it. If you have never used line tracing before, this may seem fairly intimidating, but fear not. What we will be doing is projecting an invisible line from our camera forward at a distance equal to our harvest distance variable. This line will travel and only stop if it hits an actor that can be harvested. When it hits that actor, we know to move forward with our harvest code. With that in mind, let's add some logic. First off, we need a first person camera reference. Drag the camera component from the top left of the screen into the graph. From this, we need two things, get world location and get forward vector. Get forward vector, look up vector times float. In the variables panel, control drag in the harvest distance variable onto the float pin. Right click and look up vector plus vector and add it. Connect the output pin of our multiplication node into the bottom pin of our addition node. Connect the get world location output pin into the upper input pin of our addition node. Lastly, plug the output pin of the get world location node additionally into the start pin of our line trace and plug the output pin of our addition node into the end pin. What we just did was take our current location, then take a point in front of us based on our current rotation, multiply that so we have a point some distance away, then add those together to get that position. This is us raycasting from the camera forward. The last thing we need here is the type of objects we wish to have the ray trace hit. Before we define that, let's add a custom type so that this line trace will only ever hit resource nodes. Quickly jumping back into the main interface, select settings, and project settings. Navigate to engine, then collision, and inside we want to add a new object channel. Click the new object channel button and call this resource with a default response of ignore. Click OK and we can hop back into our script. From the object types pin, add a make array node. In the drop down, you'll notice our resource channel is an option. Select this. Now this trace will only react if it hits an object of the type resource. With that set, Plug the two output pins of the trace node into the return node of our function. And we can consider this function complete. Hopping back into our event graph, drag in a copy of our function and connect it to the E key event. From this, look up branch. Connect the condition pin to the did hit pin. And from our true pin, look up harvest. If you are unfamiliar with using interfaces, then this may look a bit strange. This is our harvest interface function. We're going to call it pointing to whatever harvestable actor we found by using our ray trace. Let's hook up all the pins. From the hit result pin of our check for harvest node function, look up break hit result. This is the node detailing a ton of details about what we actually hit, including our reference to who we hit. From the hit actor pin, plug that into the target pin of the harvest function. From the player ref pin, look up self. From the harvest amount pin, look up 
harvest speed. Just after we call this function, we want to make sure to record the node we are harvesting for later. I'll drag the harvest node ref variable into the graph to get a set node. Hook this up, then plug the hit actor pin of the hit result into the input pin of the set node. After this, drag in a set node for the is harvesting variable, setting the checkbox to true. This is all we need to do for our actual interaction events. Lastly, we need a way of making sure we are still harvesting. The best way to do this is to check whether we are still looking at the resource node. We need the event tick node for this. Right click anywhere and look up event tick. From this, add a branch node with the condition pin pointing to a get reference for the is harvesting variable. From the true pin, look up delay. Because a vent tick runs in such high frequency, we want to only run this code at certain times as to avoid performance costs. From the delta seconds pin of the tick event node, look up float times float. In the second input pin, put 10. From the output pin, connect it to the duration pin. This means this code will only run every 0.1 seconds instead of the much higher frequency it would have otherwise. From the delay node, add another copy of our check for harvest node function. From the did hit pin, add another branch node. From the false pin, look up the user stopped harvesting interface function and add it with a target pin pointing to a get reference for the harvest node ref variable. Lastly, add a set node for both is harvesting and the harvest node ref variable with the values cleared. With all of this code in place, our character is fully set up to use a harvesting system. They can enable a resource check via the E key, then continually check whether we are harvesting or not. The last piece to build is a harvest actor itself. Jumping back to our content browser, right click and add a blueprint class, selecting the actor type. Call this bp underscore resource and open it. Because we are calling the interface function in our player script while pointing to this actor, we need to make sure this actor has the interface implemented. Click the class settings button at the top of the screen and in the details panel under interfaces, click the add dropdown and add our custom interface. After that, let's give our resource a body. Select a viewport tab and in the components tab in the top left, add a new static mesh component. Call this model. And in the details, change the static mesh property to point to a model of your choice. In my case, I'll choose cube. Position is how you see fit, as long as it can be seen by the user. Lastly, we need to make sure that this cube is of the object type resource, so our raycast hits it. In the details panel, navigate to collision. In the dropdown, change the type to custom. Then, change the object type dropdown to resource. With that changed, this object is officially a harvestable actor. Let's move into our script. In the event graph, let's add a ton of variables. First up is one called material drop chance of the type integer. Make this an array and set it to be public. The next one is harvest current life of the type float. Set this to be public as well with a default value of 100. Make another float variable called harvest max life with a default value of 100 and also being set to public. Next, we need one called player ref with a data type being whatever your character class is, in my case, of the type first person character. Make sure to leave this one private. Lastly, add another variable called harvest UI ref of the type WG harvest. The first thing we need in our script is the actual harvest event. Right click and look up harvest event. This is us implementing the interface's harvest function and defining what it does. Drag in a set reference to our player ref variable and hook that up to the event. From this, add a branch with the condition pin hooked up to an is valid check. From the object pin, connect it to a get reference to our harvest UI ref variable. What this is doing is checking whether our harvest UI actually exists currently and changing how we should act based on that. If the harvest UI exists currently, then we just need to update the UI progress. Otherwise, we need to spawn the UI first. Let's go from the false pin first. Add a create widget node and set the class to be wg underscore harvest. Drag in a set reference to our harvest UI ref variable and connect it to this node. Now, instead of adding this widget to the screen, we actually want to add it to the HUD instead. To do so, we need to get the player's HUD reference. Drag in a get reference to our player ref variable and from that, grab the HUD ref variable. Then, grab a reference to the main panel and from this, look up add child. Connect the output pin of our set node to the content pin of this node. 
This will add the widget as a child to the HUD and also make it visible. Next, let's arrange the position of the harvest UI on the HUD. From the return value pin, look up cast to canvas panel slot. Because we added our UI as a child of the canvas panel, it automatically inherited the properties of being a canvas panel slot. And some of those properties control position. From the output pin, look up set anchors. From the anchors pin, look up make anchors. This is the position on the screen that the widget will sit regardless of how the screen is scaled. For values, put in 0.4 in the minimum x, 0.6 in the maximum x, 0.8 in the minimum y, and 0.87 in the maximum y. Next, from the canvas panel slot pin, look up set position and connect it to the anchors node. Leave the values here at zero. Lastly, from the canvas panel slot pin, look up set size and connect it to the position node. Also, leave this at zero. That's the dynamic setup of a harvest UI. Next, let's handle the actual update to the progress bar. We will need a function for this. Click the plus function button on the left side of the screen and call it check progress. This will need one input called harvest amount of the float data type. Inside, drag in a get reference to our harvest current life variable, and from that, look up float minus float. Connect the harvest amount pin to the lower pin on the subtraction node, and connect the result to a set reference to our current harvest life variable. This is us taking the current life of the node and updating it based on the harvest speed value passed in by the player. From the set node, add a branch. From the condition pin, look up float less than or equal to and add it, connecting the upper input pin to the set output pin. This is checking if we are at or below zero light. Next, drag in a get reference to our harvest UI variable. And from that, look up update progress, connecting this to the false pin of the branch. For the two inputs, plug in harvest current life for input and harvest max life for input max. In the case that we have not reached zero health remaining, merely update the UI. Otherwise, let's add the logic to destroy this actor upon complete consumption. For this, we need another function. Click the plus function button and call this resource depleted. First off, we need to destroy the harvest UI. Drag in a get reference to our harvest UI ref variable, and from it, look up remove parent. Now, drag in a get reference to our player ref variable. From this, look up set resources. What we want to do here is take the current value of resources and add it to a random amount between the numbers within the material drop chance array. Drag in a get reference to the material drop chance array, and from that, add two get ref nodes. For the first one, leave the index value to zero, while the second set it to one. Right click and add a random integer and range node, connecting the min and max to these two get nodes respectively. From the output pin of this node, look up integer plus integer. Make sure this is plugged into the bottom of the two input pins. From the playref get reference node we added earlier, look up get resources. From this, plug it into the upper pin of the integer plus integer node, and connect the output pin of this node into the set resources node. Once that's done, from the execution pin, look up destroy actor. That concludes our function that dictates what happens when we use up a node. Let's go back to our check progress function. From the true pin of the branch, look up our new resource depleted node. With that, check progress is also complete. Let's go back to our event graph. From the set size node we created earlier, drag in our check progress function. For the harvest amount input pin, drag all the way back to the red event node and plug it into the harvest amount output pin. With this, our logic for first time spawning the HUD is complete. Let's finish the other track. Navigating all the way back to the first branch, from the true pin, add another check progress function. Repeat the process for the harvest amount pin by plugging it back into the harvest amount pin of the red event node. Now, our system is complete except for one final step. We need to make sure the UI closes when we look away. Right click in the event graph and look up user stopped harvesting event. Add it. Drag in a get reference to our harvest UI variable. And from that, look up remove from parent. Lastly, make sure to clear the variable by dragging in a set harvest UI ref node and leaving the option blank. Now, our system is complete and ready to be tested.
Jumping to the main interface, let's drag in a couple copies of our resource actor. In the details panel of each one, take a look at the options we made public. In material drop chance, make sure to add two indexes, the first one with the minimum number of resources to add, and the second with a maximum. So in this case, I'm going to choose 1 and 4. In harvest current life and max life, these represent how long it'll take to completely harvest a node. Right now, we do 20 life a click, so in 5 clicks we harvest the node. Feel free to change this to a higher number. Additionally, select a player in the scene. In their details, we have both distance and speed. If you want to harvest faster, increase speed. And if you want to harvest and further, tweak distance. With those in mind, let's play. Run up to the nearest node and press E. You'll see that the UI appears and slowly will drain with each click. If I were to reduce it to zero, the actor disappears and under the hood, I acquire its resources. If we were to begin harvesting and before we finish, change to another node, we can actually see it updates to reflect the new node's life. If you return, it'll have kept its progress. As you can see, the system took a while to build and gives us quite a bit of power for modularity. There's a ton of room to expand and improve here. Add macros, collapse and clean up the script, and change it from generic resources to something specific like ore, timber, or gold. Hopefully, this gives your project a solid base to work from. And that's it. Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Most importantly though, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. As always, I'll see you in the next one.